now in the session we look at the internal working of java okay so you know a java program is built by a writing a thing called classes in the simplest sense you know a java program is a bunch of classes so you will construct at least one class by uh, typing its source code into a file once you have you know uh, you have some complete java source code in your file you compile it the java compiler turns your file full of characters into another file which contains instructions that a jvm that is the java virtual machine can interpret now the jvm that is java virtual machine takes over from here where you know jvm exists for any computer and operating system for example pcs running on windows and microsystems computer running on solaris or linux palm pilots and handspring wise uh, wisers running on palm os etc so jvm takes your class file loads it into the virtual memory links a lot of stuff together and then start interpreting or executing the program now during the linking you know your class file will be combined with other classes that are a part of the java environment standard classes exist uh, for helping you do to do things like displaying text on the display getting characters types on the keyboard from the keyboard displaying graphics etc now program is written in java programming language is first translated into the java intermediate language this is called compiling and it is done by a software that is called compiler the program is then executed on the java virtual machine which interprets the intermediate language on some target computer now by preparing a java virtual machine for each platform one platform translated into the intermediate language can be run on many different computers now uh, java source code you know files uh, that are uh, compiled into a format called the byte code which can be taken or can be executed by the java interpreter and the compiled java code can run on the most computers because you know java interpreters and the runtime environments known as the java virtual ma machines that is jvm exist for the most operating systems including unix mac then windows okay so talking about first talking about jdk now jdk is basically an acronym for the uh, java development kit it physically exists and it contains the jre uh, plus some development tools you know the jdk includes a private jvm and a few other resources uh, you can say to finish the you can say the recipe to a java application jdk has the primary components a collection of the programming tool which includes applet viewer uh, apt then it has java java c java c is the java compiler then java doc that is the document generator jar that is the archiver then we have java h that is the c header etc so these are the various you can say the various or the primary components which are present in jdk now uh, what is jre now jre is basically an acronym for uh, java runtime environment it is used to provide the runtime environment it is the implementation of jvm it physically exists and it is basically consisting a set of libraries and other files that jvm uses at runtime the jre uh, or java runtime environment uh, is a part of java development kit a set of programming tools for developing java applications now jre provides the minimum requirement for executing a java application it consists of the jvm core classes and other supporting files in the end we have jvm now what is jvm jvm as i told you and we'll talk about this in detail that jvm is an abstract machine it is a specification that provides the runtime environment in which java bytecode can be executed now uh, you know J jvms are available for many hardware and software platform but jvm jre jdk are platform dependent because of the because of their configuration for each you know for uh, each operating system differs but java itself you know java is platform independent the implementation of the 
the implementation of JVM are also actively released by companies beside you know some microsystem. The main tasks that are performed by JVM include load loading the code, verifying the code, executing the code, and providing the runtime environment. Now, uh, th this is the figure that shows uh, how these various components are present. Now, talking about, you know, now compiler, you know, compiles the Java file. That is, it converts .java file into .class file. Now, since this .class file is a platform independent, you know, that is composed of a compiled class file of a Java uh, will be same no matter if the Java file was compiled on Windows, Linux or Mac. So uh, from the algorithmic perspective, you know, compiler is same across the platforms. But since it is an executable file, the file itself will be different on Windows. It would be a .exe file on Linux and it would be, uh, so it would be uh, Linux executable. Then, uh, you know, let's say JVM, you know, basically converts the byte code to a system specific code. Now this, since the system specific code as the name uh, suggests is dependent on OS that is operating system clearly from uh, you know now this JVM is different across OS as you know basically what happens uh, this uh, J this particular file that we get you know they're different uh, we can say if I'll, I'll just you know explain the various parts that are the internal architecture of JVM how does that work. Uh, but to you know take it in nutshell java compiler um, or jre installed on one os will not work on other os that is why you know oracle gives options like jdk for windows jdk for linux while downloading if you you might have seen now java code you know compiled on one os will run on other os because you know this is the this is because byte code that is the dot class file for the same dot java file would be same across all the operating systems the disassembled byte code uh, for the same dot class file will be different across the various operating systems now, JVM uh, is an abstract machine. It is, the, as I told you, it is the specification uh, that provides a runtime environment in which the byte code can be executed. Now, it is a specification where working of the Java virtual machine is specified. Uh, it is implementation provider and, uh, you know, implementation provider is dependent to choose the algorithm. Its implementation has been provided by Sun and some other companies also, as I told you earlier. And uh, an implementation, you know, uh, when we talk about uh, what uh, definitions, you know, JVM provides various definitions for the memory area, the class file format, the register set, the Java heap, you know, sorry, garbage collected heap and fatal error reporting. Now we'll take them one by one. First of all, we have the class loader. Now the class loader is a subsystem of the JVM that is used to load the class files. Now the class area, uh, you can say the class area or the method area, you know, stores per class structures such as the runtime constant pool, field and the method data and the code for the methods. Then we have heap. It is the runtime data area in which the objects are allocated. Then we have stack. Now the stack is, uh, you know, Java stack stores frames. It holds the local variables and the partial results and plays a part in the method invocation and return. Each thread, you know, has a private JVM stack, create, which is created at the time uh, as, uh, as the thread. So a new frame is, or uh, every time a new frame is created uh, when a method is invoked, and the frame, you know, it is very important to note that this particular frame gets destroyed when the method invocation is done or is complete. Then we have the PCR, that is the program counter register, that is a PC register. So it is, uh, it, it contains the address of the Java virtual machine instruction currently being executed. Then we have the native method stack. Native method stack, it contains all the native methods used in the application. 
and in the end we have the execution engine which contains a virtual processor and interpreter and a jit compiler that is the just in time compiler now what is a just in time compiler it is basically you know used to uh, it is uh, when we talk about the just in time compiler it is used to improve the uh, performance uh, so jit compiler you know uh, compiles part of the bytecode that have similar functionality at the same time and hence reduces the amount of time needed for the compilation so hence the term compiler you know refers to translator from the instruction set of a java virtual machine to the instruction set of a specific cpu now when we talk about the main difference between a jit and a jvm is that jit is a part of jvm itself and is used to improve the performance of the jvm now jit stands for just in time compilation and jvm stands for uh, java virtual machine java virtual machine is a virtual machine used in java programming platform to execute or run the pro run the java programs and the main advantage of jvm is the, is that it makes the java platform independent by executing the byte codes so java source code as i told you is compiled into the class class files which contains the byte code and these byte codes are then executed by jvm now here comes the jit since you know execution of the byte code is slower than the execution of the machine code uh, because jvm first needs to translate the byte code into machine code basically jit helps jvm here by compiling currently executing byte code into machine language so jit also you know offers caching of the compiled code which re which results in the better performance of the java virtual machine so whenever the java program uh, comes for the execution very first time the interpreter will uh, come into picture and convert one by one you know the bytecode instructions into machine level instruction but from the very next time the next time onwards jit compiler will come into picture and will convert the one by one bytecode instruction into machine level instructions jit will basically speed up the execution of the program So this is about the internal working of Java.